Next, we have a comment from Atoms of Stardust. They say, See, that's exactly what I told you a few weeks ago. TikTok has a way better suggestion algorithm, and they actually do put your videos in front of people. While YouTube says basically, it's not our job, go promote your content somewhere else somehow. Now you see and feel exactly what I was talking about. It should be the platform's job to put your content in front of the people, and TikTok is doing that light years better than YouTube. So I think it's about time creators on YouTube stop making excuses for YouTube and start actually talking about the issue and demand changes to their algorithms to help put content in front of other people instead of simply saying, well, you can upload videos for free and overall YouTube doesn't owe us anything and other nonsense like that. Atoms of Stardust, thank you very much for the comment. I really do appreciate it. I disagree with this almost 100%. The part that I don't disagree with is that TikTok is better at finding out who your potential audience is and feeding it to them. The question that I have is the quality of those views. I don't know what a view is calculated as on TikTok. Somebody else brought this up in the comments section, and this is something that I talked about years ago when Facebook was getting into video, the quality of the view. Facebook was counting one second of a video view as a view. And that allowed people scrolling through their feeds to just stop for a second. Okay, that's a view. Continue on. Oh, that's a view. That's a view. That's a view. That's a view. When in reality, that ought not have been considered a view. That's not an actual view. And that caused issues. I don't know if it actually led to any kind of lawsuits, but for advertisers who were Funding content creators who are buying ads based on the view count, that view count was inflated. So I am skeptical about the quality of view. And I'm not saying that people who are watching the video, that their view doesn't matter. I am saying what actually qualifies as a view. I looked this morning, the video that I put out has 130,000 views. That's amazing. It has 20,000 thumbs up. So I am going to assume 20,000 people saw it, but I don't know about the others. Was it just one second and then scrolling on? Or was it I'm going to watch a minute and 30 seconds? So I don't know. But I want to go back to what you're saying about YouTube and content creators on the platform making excuses for the platform. I don't think content creators are making excuses for the platform. I just simply don't think that us uploading content to the platform means that we are owed an audience. I don't think we automatically deserve an audience. Just because we spend our free time making videos, I don't think that means that we deserve views on that video. I may spend 12 hours on a single podcast episode. That doesn't mean that I deserve X amount of views, that my podcast episode deserves 1,000 or 10,000 or 50,000 downloads or listens or views on YouTube or shares on TikTok or whatever it may be. I don't think that me spending time has any direct correlation to the views that that piece of content will receive. I think... Time and views, time and success are completely uncorrelated. Some of my most popular videos took the least amount of time. Why is that? Because that piece of content appealed to the largest number of people. The videos that I have spent the most amount of time on many times end up bombing because people just don't care about it. And that is fine. That is how I chose to spend my time. If through sheer brute force, I have grown this podcast over seven years. Yes, I have been producing this for seven years. If through sheer brute force and constant iteration and constant improvement, I have grown it to the point where I get 1,000, 2,000 views per episode, amazing. If I spend that same amount of time and get 50 views per episode, That's fine too. That is why I have always advocated not making content because you want the views. Do not make content because you think, oh, this is going to make me famous. This is going to get me internet clout. 
if you are getting into making content, I think you ought to be approaching it as, this is going to be a fun way to spend my time. I enjoy making videos. I enjoy making podcasts. I have this burning desire. I need to scream about this on a microphone. And if I don't, I'm going to explode. I think you need to be making content because of that. If you aren't making content because of that, what happens when you don't end up getting an audience? You get demoralized. You start hating making content because you're not doing it out of the joy of doing it. I can tell you, if somebody, if there's a business person watching this and they, they hear me say, I have spent seven years producing this podcast, audio and video, and I only get 2,000, 3,000 listens between video and audio, they would say, you are a complete and utter idiot. Wait, how much do you earn from advertisements on YouTube every single week for the five, ten hours you put into it? Five dollars? You are a moron. (laughs) And sure, maybe, maybe they're right. They're probably right. (laughs) That's a really dumb value proposition, earning five dollars for five to ten hours of work. But my point is. I produce this podcast and I have been producing this podcast for seven years because I enjoy doing it. It's fun for me. So if I was getting 50 views, I would still be doing it. If I was getting 50,000 views, I would still be doing it. And just because I spend five to 10 hours a week producing this, I don't think that I'm owed an audience. I have 10,000 subs on this channel almost, let's say 9,000. I will get 1,500 to 2,000 views per episode. Not the best conversion rate. Should I be mad at YouTube for that? No. Should I be mad that my original podcast for the first couple of years was getting 300 views? No. I shouldn't be. I was still learning how to produce high quality and engaging content, and I am... Don't you dare leave a comment saying, this is high quality, this is engaging. Leave me alone. (laughs) Leave me alone. Stop bullying me. So so I I don't think that we are owed anything by uploading to YouTube. I don't think we are owed anything just by spending time on something. I think we need to ensure that we are offering value to people. But also, we need to understand where our audience is in terms of platforms. I'm not saying that a YouTube view is better than a TikTok view. I am saying I don't understand what a TikTok view is. Maybe those 130,000 views are people who watched all one minute and 30 seconds of the video. That would be amazing. But it sounds as though you have found your platform on TikTok. You have found your audience on TikTok. Why not go all in and produce all the content that you can for that platform for the people on the platform that enjoy your stuff? I say go for it. That's amazing that you have found an audience. Most people don't. But going back to view statistics and finding your audience, yes, it does seem that TikTok can be better than YouTube. It can give you better views than YouTube. I said 130,000 views on my video about putting a condom on a microphone. On YouTube, I, that video is under 10,000. However, the video that I put out yesterday on YouTube has about 3,000 or 4,000 views, and TikTok has 50. So should I be saying, ah, oh, TikTok can't find me, my audience. What the heck are they doing? They're not giving my content. No. I am still learning what works from platform to platform because the content expectations, just like the user expectations of what you go to a platform for, are different from platform to platform. That condom microphone video seems to have been tailored very well to TikTok. A video discussing the the differences in lavalier placement (laughs) may not be content that is ideal for TikTok. So I think that's important to understand as well. If you found your audience on a platform, 
if you found what type of content you're good at making and that is exclusively successful on TikTok, that's incredible. I am very happy for you, but I do not think we are owed a single thing just for uploading. I don't think we are owed a single thing just because we spend our time doing something. We should be making content because we love it, because we enjoy it, as opposed to seeking out validation from strangers on the internet. That is a road to depression and misery, because when those figures start to go down, boy howdy does it hit you in the... hits you where the sun don't shine. I'll tell you, (laughs) it makes you reassess a lot of stuff. I am speaking from experience when I make this recommendation because I had to learn how to do this. I am still learning how to do this. It is a good idea to disassociate your self-worth, to disassociate your happiness, your joy, your enjoyment out of life, your enjoyment out of producing content from those views. Do not allow those views, do not allow the success of your videos to impact your self-worth. Do not allow the success of your content or lack thereof to impact your happiness. Now I am just giving myself advice, and I hope that didn't come across condescending. I'm just rambling at this point. (laughs) I hope there was something helpful in there. And like I said a few weeks back when I was replying to you, it sounds as though you have found your audience on TikTok. If you have found your audience on TikTok, go forth and rock and roll. Go forth and make content that you enjoy on the platform for the people who enjoy watching you. Just because you succeed on TikTok doesn't take away from somebody else on YouTube. Just because somebody else is successful on YouTube doesn't take away from your success on TikTok. It's fascinating how the different platforms function. We are in interesting times, my friend, interesting times. 